Hello, and welcome to another episode of Within the Game. My name is Aaron Wexler, and today my guest is the one and only Rob Deerdeck. In this episode, we talk about seeking harmony over hustle, applying the idea of design, automation, and optimization, and really just being the best version of yourself. It's a great episode for personal growth and really just being on an entrepreneurial journey. I want to thank uh, episode sponsor, Hayo. Hayo is a better than alcohol alternative, social tonic crafted with organic adaptogens, natural nootropics, and functional botanicals to help elevate your mood and empower you to be truly happy in your own. Go to drinkhio.com and use Within the Game 10 to get 10% off your order. I really want to thank you, the listener, for being a fan of the show. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and um, enjoy the show. Uh, Rob, I got to tell you, man, this is a truly full circle moment for me. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, no, good, good to be here. Look forward to the conversation. Rob, you're a former pro skateboarder, a holder of 21 Guinness World Records, host of Ridiculousness, creator and star of Fantasy Factory, Robin Big, and that all that makes you an MTV legend. You're a branding master, inspiring entrepreneur, and CEO and leader of the Deer Deck Machine, a venture creation studio that manufactures amazing amazing companies by systematically fusing art, science, and magic. You're the host of Build With Rob podcast, where you sit down with fellow do or dire visionary entrepreneurs and help them with their business and life visions. You're a husband and father and visionary yourself. Again, Rob, you are the man. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, the intro, the intro. I mean, when you take it all the way back to the star of Fantasy Factory and Rob and Big, uh, takes back, takes me back, you know. Yeah, man. You know, so look, man, I, I kind of want to jump right into this, man. Um, you know, you talk a lot about, you know, living an amazing life. You know, my message is all about inspiration and, and finding people that I feel like could ins- we could all inspire each other. Right. Um, so my message is living inspired. Right. This idea of this inspired living. What does that mean to you, man? You know, I, I, I think, um, you know, it's there's a there's a lot of layers to living inspired, right? Because not not only do you have to find what you're most passionate at, um, and try to find a career that can create the type of income that allows you to live the lifestyle that you've attached to your identity, right? That's sort of this sort of ecosystem of of wanting to live an inspired, passionate life. And, and ultimately having balance in your entire life system, both in your time, your energy, and your mind share, or your capacity, I think is when you're truly living a, an inspired life. You know what I mean? And you get up every day and go from thing to thing to thing that you really enjoy and you track and prove that joy by the amount of energy you get from it, as opposed to the, the things that you would do that would draw energy. You know, it's, it's really how I look at it um, when I when I try to like tie it into the single phrase of living inspired, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's so great, man. And I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about the whole idea of rhythm of life, because you seem to have mastered this rhythm. You know, you talk a lot of a lot about it in other podcasts, and you just kind of just, you, you kind of embody this idea of rhythm. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. And, and, you know, to me, when I say, you know, I, I built my my life operating mile called uh, operating system called the rhythm of existence, which is basically like how my life flows and sort of all the things that I do inside of it, um, which essentially creates a framework for all the things that I can drive the automation, which allows me to do a lot more stuff with stuff with a lot less effort. Right. Because you, you think about it when you you know sort of the flow of your year, the flow of your sort of quarter, you know, as it goes through holidays, birthdays, summer, like then you know what you got to do kind of each week, each month, you know, all the things that you wish you did to take care of yourself, spend time with those that that are meaningful to you, like all these different things that are meaningful to your existence. 
if you don't plan those and build those into a rhythm and then allow them to turn into essentially your way of life or your core habits, you're, you're always going to be chasing it. If, if you don't try to turn that into a rhythm and be the way that you live, then you're always going to be like, Oh, I'm working too much. Oh, I got to, now I got to spend more time over here. Oh, I gotta, I gotta eat better now. Like, Oh, at the beginning of the year is when I'm going to eat better. You end up trying to do all these things in pockets rather than and giving yourself a chance to live in this sort of highly uh, optimized flow state, you know? Yeah. And, and let's, so let's talk about this optimized idea, right? Because I've heard you talk about it a lot. I know you have this automated kind of calendar and everything is kind of a machine, right? Can you talk a little bit about this idea of being optimized? How do you, like, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, it's like, look, you you optimized means you're you've created something and now you're making it better and better and better instead of starting over and creating something new always. Right. So when I think about all the different facets of my life, I refer to it as design, automate and optimize. Right. Because really, how do you like create something and shape it and then drive it into this effortless state? Right. And, right. you know, now I would use it as an example of probably how you prepare and shoot this podcast today and for a year versus what you did when you first started and like now you have oh I shoot on Fridays between 12 and 1 and I send out ahead of time I send out the the outline of what we're going to talk to I were I, I finished those outlines like a week before you begin to see all of these things versus like when you started the first okay what am I gonna how do right. I schedule it when do I do it it's like it's like, and then now you have driven your podcast into automation. It's consistent. Now the optimization comes in how the interview goes, the type of questions you ask, like the things you learn along the way, the, the better you get at studying the people you're going to have to come on and the better and better and better you get. You can only begin to make your podcast, as an example, better and better once you don't have to think anymore of how am I going to produce it? How am I going to upload it? How am I going to create it? Once you've driven it all to automation, now you can make it great, right? And so if you can think, I apply that to every single aspect of my entire existence, from my health side, to my mental health, to my relationships, to my financial um structures and systems to my career and companies and everything that I do, it falls into that, like have an idea, create it, design it, then go through the process of it sort of revealing itself to you, drive it to automation. Once it's an automation, make it extraordinary and you can keep making it better and better and better forever. And, and I think, you know, ridiculousness is a really good example of that, of how I was able to take it from this really really difficult, hard, heavy lifting concept in the beginning and shooting one episode a day for like 10 hours and doing five hours of prep to doing 15 minutes of prep and shooting a show in a half hour and shooting six a day, right? Like that's, that's where you just go over the years of getting better and better and better through optimization, you know? I love it, man. And I told you before, like, you are literally responsible for hours of laughter for my life for just with that one show, man. And so thank you for that. <laughs> um, I want to talk about your mindset. Let's keep let's keep this idea of the mindset, the rhythm of life, the, the, the machine mindset. Can you talk a little bit about self awareness and self belief as a process? Because I've heard you talk about that before. And for my listeners who are mostly athletes and entrepreneurs, you know, we all need that self belief, but it starts with the self awareness, I feel like so. Yeah, w talk about that. What does that mean to you? And how do how do people get better self belief? You know, look, I, I think, um, I think everything starts with self awareness, right? right. And, and you you've got to be um, be able to look outside yourself and assess yourself in a way that you know what you need to learn, what you need to do, what you actually like to do, what do you want to do, and ultimately you've got to begin to learn to put a vision and create uh, a flag in the ground for where you want to go in the future. Right. So let's say you're an entrepreneur, ex athlete, and now you're, um, you know, what do I do in this next career phase? You know, whatever it is, 
you're insecure, you don't know. You've you've been raised in a framework of like where um, your junior high had a had an athletics program that led to a high school program framework that led to a college framework that led to a pro framework. Like we're so used to growing and evolving inside structured frameworks that others have built for us. And that's where we tend to build our self-belief and our confidence. But when we're pushed out into the real world by ourselves, and like, we've got to figure out how to build a company, figure out what career we're going to make after college, after high school, we have to figure out all these things. There's no definitive framework for how exactly we should move forward in order to uh, get the fulfillment, the achievement, the success that we need to build back the belief that we built inside the previous frameworks that were structured for us to create relief and easy for us to thrive in, right? And I think that's the one thing that people mistake. You grow belief over time. You don't, belief and faith are very different, right? Like you can have faith that you're going to be successful one day, but believing it is built over time. And, And if you build a clear plan and you begin making progress towards that plan, and it is, and that plan uh, let's call it a career is like, man, this would, if I could, if I could create this company and make this amount of money in this amount of time, that would be a dream come true and ideal for my life. If you could tie all that together and if you begin to make progress towards it, right? Like you are going to begin to create and build belief, right? And now if you looked at yourself in a more multidimensional way and you said, here's the habits I'm going to do and start doing for my health. And um, here's the money I'm going to start saving. And here's, here's the career I'm going to build and the relationships I'm going to, to have. And like, and then essentially put goals to each of those and then begin to, to grow and progress towards that ideal version of you and those goals, you're going to generate belief as you get closer and closer to achieving what you set out as being the goal, or in this case, the ideal version of your life. You know, you can't, you can't just like have confidence and belief that something's going to work without proving it to yourself and and having clear goals and making progression towards those clear goals is where you prove it to yourself you know and so let's expand on that so the progression in that it it, it all comes from this idea of gamifying your discipline right which i've heard you talk about right because the more you you gamify and have fun with your own discipline the more you're going to kind of get stuff done right yeah and and think about it like i gamify everything and when i say gamify i put a quantifiable outcome to everything and and whether that's you know my my the companies that i build and my goal for the deer dick machine whether that's the investments that i have and in my family office and my portfolio whether that's my wife scoring how she feels about our relationship qualitatively every single day or the overall amount of uh, time that I want to spend with my wife and family and tracking that like tracking everything and then setting goals and seeing pure uh, key performance indicators as they say in business gives you clarity it also it also allows you to to push through when you're you know trying to be disciplined early on because eventually there's a paradigm shift where you're disciplined and your numbers mean are more a part of the way you live than than using them to force you to get them to get them to go there but i use it in so many different aspects and then the biggest one of course is health right right because i know like man you know at the cornerstone of everything is is just how healthy i feel right it's it's how well i sleep it's how well i recover and then ultimately how much energy and how clear i am as it relates to the decisions that i need to make to continually push uh, my evolution towards my ideal life uh, forward right and and by getting up at 5 brain training meditating getting in the gym eating clean not drinking by tracking all of those and then making them one big number that's a percentage that i look at the end of every single month 
boy, that just that gamified it for me in a super unique way. Right. And and so now I got so disciplined that it and then you do that for so long. It's just how you live. You know, it, it's like the idea of you have to now try to not do it. Because then you're like, and you, and you, it's the total opposite, right? When it, when it flips to when like, you're really deciding, okay, do I want this glass of wine? Is it worth like, how many have I had this month? Like, how do I want to disrupt like this, how strong my year has been, right? Like, okay, like, am I gonna, I just ate bad yesterday. Am I really gonna like take another day, two days in a row, like, and disrupt, like, that's, you start questioning it the other way where most, most habits you're on the other side where it's like, Oh, I got to get it back. I got to get back. Where really you're checking yourself on, do you actually want to disrupt it? Been hugely effective for me, but boy, on the other side of it, man, it's the compound effect of being disciplined at that level for multiple years. You just, you, you elevate to a, a level. And I, I think you evolve to a level, what I would almost consider rapid evolution when you become that discipline and have such clear goals, you're able to grow at such an accelerated pace, you know, man. And like, when do you, when did you start that? You know, cause uh, you know, I work with youth athletes, you know, our organization is um, at West Coast Beach, we, we work with youth athletes, but I struggle to try to figure out how to inspire them to do to kind of live in this way, right, where you gamify everything, but you're also very disciplined, and you have a clear vision, and you have goals, and you take those necessary steps. Um, when did you start this whole, I, this whole approach of qualitatively you know, writing everything down and, and organizing your time so systematically? I, you know, I actually started in 2015. You know, I, I had kind of gone through this process of, of building sort of my vision for the machine. I had hired a consultant uh, to help me build sort of the structure of how this process of creating companies would work. Yeah. And along the way, um, he taught me so much, right? He, he, he opened my eyes to personality tests and understanding who you are and, and, you know, really kind of drove me to this idea of really understanding who I was, which led to how I even built the machine, right? Because I realized, you know, I operated some businesses, I, I was the face of some businesses, some I just invested, like, what did I like to do in this entire ecosystem? And I realized that, I worked best when I had really great partners and they, they operated and I advised. Right. And so I could use my skill set of, of, you know, micro and macro vision to help shape their vision and help advise them to stay on track and evolve versus like needing to like run some things all day, every day. And something's not like getting caught between it is sort of, I learned. And then along the way, you know, and he's the one who event showed me the rhythm of company. And, and then when I saw all that, I was like, man, I could, I could really apply this to my life. And then that's when we developed the rhythm of existence. And then he like shared with me the power of qualitative da data, right. And just beginning to like, ask yourself zero to 10, like how you feel about these certain things and over. And, and when you put all that together, it begins to show sort of, uh, like pure numbers of like really what's affecting you through that process. So, you know, I'm, I, I paid $50,000 to develop the rhythm of existence. It was, you know, a 70 page, most technical, hardcore, here I go, I'm going to be the, this, I'm going to automate, I'm going to build this stuff. And it, I, the first year that I collected every single day of the year's data was 2020. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like I, it's just one of those things. Like, so I, I digress back to trying to, um, to tell some youth athlete, like to try to get into this, like how to even like begin to use mind share of how you would even be able to collect the data, let alone use data and the insight and in, in how to do it, right? It's, it's something that you have to grow and evolve into over time. And it's why I preach like, 
you know, you can't change one aspect of your life without changing it all, you know, and to me, like I'm, I began to slowly design and find harmony in the core systems of my life and begin to, to master time and live a balanced lifestyle and get better and better at understanding myself through qualitative data, get more consistent with the things that were, were um, keeping me disordered eating unhealthy, working too much, uh, going through booms and busts, like drinking too much, then going sober, like all these things. Like I was just in this like, like um, disarray or disorder by design because mm. that's how I built my entire career, right? Whether it was my skateboarding career into Robin Big, into Fantasy Factory, it was just, I just kept doing more and more launch street league and street dreams and wild grinders and like, like ridiculousness back then. It was just like, it was like, I just thought the more, if I could just do more and more and more, one of them was going to be the thing that made me happy. You know, and, and it was in that era that I just realized that, man, you're just, you can't just keep doing things and think that you're going to be happy. Because in that world, I, I was, there was so much disorder in how I operated. I was basically being pulled in a million directions so tight. And versus once I designed my life and designed the career that I wanted and what I wanted my company to be and what I wanted my life to grow into. And then over time, I grew into that life in a harmonious way and got better and better at living a highly balanced, highly harmonious evolutionary existence where I kept expanding and evolving and expanding into life is what allowed me to get to these unprecedented levels levels that I could have never even envisioned were possible when I made the plan in 2015. You know what I mean? Like this life that I live today, it's, it's, it's six years later because I designed it in 2015. I launched it in 2016 and went through the process of you know, iterating and adapting and struggling and, and is this, am I doing the right thing before it finally like broke into a rhythm? And then when that rhythm came in, when I, when I finally reached like state stability in the ecosystem, like saved enough money in my financial system, like, um, you know, had built the relationship and, and was married and now had the balance in my, my, relationship side of my life and mastered time and had balance in my work and now learned about automation and, and this deeper efficiency and optimization, I just kept getting better and better and better. And you've got to design it and grow into it. It's very hard for someone young to try to think in this this time, this sort of framework, you know what I mean? Because you've got to, you've got, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And you've got to grow into it with time, you know. Well, it's speaking of time, that that's a perfect segue to my next thing, which I've heard you talk about, which is the purpose of life is to enjoy the passage of time. I, I think you said you heard that somewhere, right? And and this idea of passage of time, right? Like it just goes, right? It's it's almost kind of like a an illusion, right? But we've organized these moments into this idea of time. And you seem to have mastered this system systemization of how to best utilize that time. Yeah. And, and are you saying for the youth athlete that that's, that's just really hard to do now, you know, or any leaders of youth, like, like, how do we best, like, prepare them so that they can best utilize their time? Yeah, no, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I think the time one's a little bit different, right? Okay. I think gamifying discipline and qualitative and quantitative data to like gather deeper insight and deeper what I would call ultra self-awareness right mm -hmm. where you can begin to experience life and then look down on yourself while you're experiencing it to assess how you can avoid or change or grow from this while it's happening to you that's the ultra side that I think you know is possible but think about time the sooner you choose to try to master time 
understanding it, using time with intention. Mm. Like I'm going to like build my rhythm and this is what I'm going to do each day and each week and at least anchored. You don't have to do every single hour. Um, and even for me, I, I, my schedule is built to keep me fully balanced and I plan everything to keep me fully balanced. But some days like I had a, a long run, like last Friday, went through this crazy closing and this mega acquisition. And, and it was this like six month long process. And it was like a week behind the closing. And I was like dead Thursday night fighting over language, you know, with, with one phone call in the morning of 30 people all releasing signatures with a confirm, you know, this extraordinary deal. And I just killed the whole weekend. I'm like, man, I am like, that's exhausting. I just reached this other milestone. Like I just, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to drink all day. <laughs> I went with the wife and got a glass of wine, had some pasta, came back to the house. Like it was, I am, I keep everything in a deep rhythm, but then give myself complete flexibility based off of how I'm feeling. I'll blow a day out to take my wife to the movie and dinner because she's having a really bad day. And then everything just falls back down into line in the system. But, I, but I, I'll say this about time. You, you want to begin to try to master it. And by mastering it, that means understanding the value of every single minute of the day every single hour, because this is the benefits of it. It seems super impossible, but it's not. You got to start somewhere. You just start by beginning to build out blocks and beginning to track it. And to me, you know, I go back through and, and everything that I do, um, you know, I will put it in my calendar of what I did during that time if I didn't have like something scheduled. So at the end of every single day or or the, the next morning, I'll do it for the previous day. I have a, a look through of every single thing that I did. Right. And what that gives is, you know, essentially uh, this deep understanding of where you are spending time. And as you begin to now understand the value of time and, and live it with deep intention, right? You then, the, the, the other benefit of it is you don't look back and wonder where time went. You, you, do, you never regret like, oh, where did I go? What did I do? Like, it's like, you know exactly what you did. And then when you think about tying all of that to a, a ton of like KPIs and quantifiable sort of um, different systems and, and, and different aspects of your life, then you can see wh where, how you lived with intention and then how it, the output towards your goals. Now you, you begin to appreciate literally every single moment that you have, which then in turn uh, really begins to allow you to design it even better, to live even better, and then avoid the things that you know are going to be pitfalls or things that you understand about yourself that you begin to learn and you can adjust in the way that you build it. But if you don't start to try to like really begin to live uh, life and, and, and treat your time with absolute intention, you will just be in a flow of time and let time push you along and pull you along. And you will be like, Oh, what I do like the last like two months, like I should have been doing this, this and that, you know what I'm saying? But if, if you don't attempt to do it, and again, I say like, that's a, that's something that I think you can begin to learn very young. It's just not something that's even taught, you know, or spoken about at a very high level of there's so many more benefits to mastering time than people realize. And, you know, I, I, I did a little thing recently on this idea of like, you can buy time. When you get more successful, you can spend money to buy time. You can build systems that automate uh, things that you need to get done. You can hire people to do things. But if you don't like know your time exactly and understand where you would spend to actually get time, you're never going to do it. You know. Wow, wow, that's that's so deep and like it just makes me want to ask you about this idea of seeking harmony over hustle because so many athletes and entrepreneurs, we know how to hustle. 
right? We know how to put in the work. We know how to put our head down. But this idea of this emotional intelligence, right? Being so aware of this qualitative data that you take and, and seeking harmony, right? Um, how does that all fit into this idea of just kind of being the most efficient with your time? Yeah, look, I, I just think, you know, what I think, I used to be a hustler. And I did a lot of things and was incredibly successful, right? But I I'm, I'm, was not truly happy. Just wasn't happy. And, and, and the most incredible thing is I was actually 10 times less effective. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it's why I, I, you know, have been preaching it's harm. I live a high quality, harmonious, limitless existence. Right. Let's and, go. and to me, it's you, it's, I, I don't have to like, try to get healthy. Right. Like I don't have to like, like try to figure out what I want to do with my money. I don't have to try to, I'm not figuring out what I want to do with my career or my relationships or my free time by, by designing it. And, and, and simply, it's not like, Oh, this, this super complex design. It's like in your ideal life, what, what would you do? And how would you feel with your health In your ideal life? How would you, how would you feel about yourself, your self-confidence, your mental health in your ideal life? How much money would you have saved and where would it be? You do in your ideal life what would you be your career ideal life what would be the important relationships and how much time would you spend on your leisure and lifestyle and your ideal life what would you be doing for fun and all this stuff on the side you could map one you could you could name oh in an ideal life i'd be you know i'd work out five days a week and eat clean and like do that you would be able to name exactly what it is now okay great build a plan backwards to do all of it right and mm. and why 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 all of it matters is that you know the energy that you have will ultimately be generated by that harmony and and when you have balance and harmony in your existence that energy that that more natural perpetual state of energy is what then a tracks opportunity that leads you to getting more healthier that leads you to more opportunity in your career that allows you to have a better relationship that allows you to have more fun in your off time like and then ultimately it gives you you know the 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 self belief that you're doing it for a bigger reason Right. And the bigger reason isn't necessarily to change the world or to buy a house for my mom. The bigger reason is to be happy. And everybody's happiness lies at the center of a high quality, harmonious existence. Right. And you need health. You need financial well-being, a great career, great relationships and balanced time for that to actually occur. So why not? begin to learn how to design your life through uh, that system and then get better and better at it over time. I just, I oh. didn't get balanced overnight and harmonious overnight. It took years to grow into it, but now I just operate in this perpetual energetic state. Now I'm just growing at this sort of rapid harmonious way where and the world continues to reveal new possibilities as I achieve new goals and see further and further. Because you got to think you expand towards goals. By the time you get there, you've learned so much that you can see even further of what you can do uh, to, do, to be better or to another ideal that you would like to chase. But you want all of that to work. So you expand harmoniously into your ideal life and then beyond, you know. Man, it's just dropping nuggets right now. Um, can you talk a little bit about biomechanics? You mentioned health, and I know you're big on biomechanics. I am too. But for my audience and for anyone listening to this, how do you how do you become better at your own biomechanics? Yeah, I mean, look, this is a this is a rabbit hole, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, for me, just because um, you got to understand, I am I. Man, I believe so much in the value of a perfectly balanced structure 
to, to essentially be able to create the right energy flow through your system yeah. that allows you to be able to get the clarity to set the goals and, right. and gamify the discipline. Like I look at it as like this sort of central force. And then for me, it's ultimately you know, the relationship between your neuromuscular structure and your skeletal structure ultimately will dictate whether or not you build compensation and different muscle, um, muscle groups based off of the dysfunction that you've created throughout your life. Now, for me, you know, I triangulated NKT neurokinetic therapy and have a doctor come to my house, house four days a week. Um, and I know how to test every single muscle group and I can test if it's a dysfunctional muscle, um, stuck fascia, scar tissue, nerve related, I can, I can test it. Now I learned that from having a doctor come to my house four days a week and trying all these different therapies that allowed me to understand and know every single muscle in my body. And I could tell a doctor uh, that my gastroc just fired and it's hypertonic and then test it and show that it's hypertonic. Now, again, <laughs> rabbit hole on how well I understand the body. I think a really good example of it is Tom Brady, where he refers to it as pliability. And, you know, there'll be, you know, a lot of athletes that'll be like, oh, it's like, you know, what even is that? You know what I mean? I got to get strong and, you know, get reps and get in there. But what you're seeing in Tom Brady is, is the perfect relationship between his neuromuscular structure and his skeletal structure. So it goes beyond biomechanics because it goes into now uh, how oxygen and how your lungs work in your diaphragm and then through all your internal organs and all these things that he puts into his body that allows his body to react exactly the way his mind has made that body react and never change as most aging athletes, their body begins to change, build compensation, injuries happen, new neural pathways are created. They're not trying to uh, scar tissues laid down in two muscle groups fire with together now, which drive you into permanent neurology dysfunction. Too deep, too <laughs> deep for the audience. But that's I, okay. I go back to trust Tom Brady and what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Like you need that pliability is so important and balance inside your, your system is so important if you want to avoid injuries and have a long, long career, you right, know, right. And, and make no mistake. I'm and this is unfortunate. I'm going to bum a lot of people out, but sometimes you're just born with dysfunction and you can become an incredible athlete with dysfunction and slowly Sorry about that. And okay. slowly, you can you can be an incredible athlete that was born with a dysfunction and then build this amazing structure around it that just doesn't have longevity that will slowly like like turn into a bone spur and then a calf's gonna go then an Achilles goes then how did my ACL go just stepping right like like to me it's one of the things that just isn't um it is still it, it's people have gotten to the point of understanding oh it's really important and the whole body is one system but not enough yet and because i know what i had to heal myself from in going through this process and learning this happened to me at birth you know and it was what i like to call the old hackenberg curse but my my grandfather had it my mother had it and and then when my i could see it in my son when he was born at 6 weeks old oh, and wow. and it was like he wasn't even walking he was just leaning to the side like all all of us had done to build this sort of dysfunction and it turned out his upper trap wasn't firing. And then when I rewound all of my biomechanics and unwound sort of all my dysfunction, it came up to the same upper trap not firing. And, it, and you could kind of see how a genetic predisposition for that trap not to fire could lead to this dysfunction that's passed down through generations. But I was a professional athlete, super in shape and, you know, crazy stunt guy doing the craziest stuff with this dysfunctional uh, system. But I had got to, you know, the best shape of my life at 40 years old and was like, this is 
I'm ache, I'm in the best shape of my life, but I have my calf is constantly going, my hamstrings bad, I constantly have na- neck pain, I have nerve pain in my QL, like all these things that I've been carrying for years. And my vision was, I just want flawless structure. Right. But as I set out on that journey, I began, I I began to learn so much about the body and then began to triangulate all these different therapies and different thesis as it relates to human functionality, which allowed me to almost create my own therapy to get to where I am today, you know, man. Hey, but think about it. What's the gift? I knew at 40, I was going to slowly break down. And as I got into my 50s and 60s, I wasn't even going to be able to be athletic. I could just see that like there was so much tension in my system. But now after going on this journey, I know every muscle in my body. I've had blood work every year for you know the last 10 years. I've had, I know so much about my body that anything that happens, I go have a conversation with an expert based off of what I, my analysis, based off of knowing that everything happening in my body, that there wouldn't be just some, something randomly happened from left field. I would be able to assess it and then work with the doctor on, doctor on how to heal it or assess how to change it because this is what's, what's happened to me in, in the first 47 years of living. And what does it mean? I know that I will be healthier and healthier and healthier till the day my cells just don't have the power and then I will slowly degenerate. Probably 107, 108. And I'll live my last four years because I want to be a super centurion. A little wonky. You know what I mean? But I see myself getting healthier and healthier and healthier up to about 108. You know what I mean? Not the paradigm of like, I peaked it in, at 35 <laughs> and I'm just going to like try to stave it off as best as I can. The exact opposite, where I can just see, especially how active and healthy and what I'm going to be capable of doing physically uh, in my 50s, the same, no different than the great Tom Brady, who's like, it's just going to be a matter of like, it's not a physical thing. He figured it out. He mastered yeah. his entire system and has, has preventedly. And now he does, he, he is no different, better than, he, better than his previous career these last two years. Right. And, and it's the same sort of thing and paradigm shift, but you can't do that unless you learned your entire system and everything about your body along the way to build that belief that you actually are going to get healthier and healthier over time, you know, man, I love it, man. Um, I want to take this conversation down a path of energy and law of attraction and manifesting. So we talked about the biomechanics and we talked about energy. So when you have good biomechanics and you feel really good in your body, physical body, what does that do to your energy? Yeah. You know, and, and, and how do you use that energy to all these other things in your vision and your life planning and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I mean, look again, you know, you are this, and it all integrates completely together. You know what I mean? And, and, and your health and your well being physically is one part of it. You know what I mean? It, and it's, you know, you have to have that same, um, biomechanics and structure and goal and your fitness goal you got to have it in your financial and career and relationships and recovery and free time and your ability to 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 be able to assess and evolve right like and Mm -hmm. all of that matters to creating great energy in your system all of it does, because think about it, you can be in, you can have flawless biomechanics and be like in the best shape and eat so clean. But if you have like a bad relationship and, 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 or in the family member with a friend, if you, you're, you don't like your career or it's not stable, or you, you you never set any financial goals and your career is not stable. And then like, you don't have any money saved and you're not growing towards any sort of like financial, like you're the stress of that 
is going to disrupt your energy so much that it's it doesn't matter what um doesn't matter how well you take care of yourself you're never going to have balance and harmony that will ultimately create that energy in order to to um you know uh, create the the ability to manifest and ability to control the law of attraction now it doesn't mean all of those have to be in place and you're doing it. All you have to do is just have a plan and be making the slightest of progress towards each of those. Because if you have a plan for each, you can be incredibly patient and, and you can get a little stagnant and be upset, but a little bit of progress will make you feel like you're on track. It's when you don't have a plan for any of these things is when you begin to be bound and feeling like, what am I even doing? And that, that pulls from that energy. That's mm -hmm. why I go back to like, you know, creating a plan for those those core existence systems, and then then growing into it over time in a balanced way, because then, you know, like the clearer you are of what you want to need, um, the more likely you are going to be pulled towards it. You know, and and for me, you know, I, and again, I practice it. I don't like. I I'm even careful with what I what I'm what I even say that I need uh, or want and, and making sure that it's what I really want. Cause a lot of times it'll be like, Oh, you know, I'll want something that will actually disrupt um, you know, or pull time away or focus away from kind of where I'm at. You know? That's huge. That's huge. I think we all do that. Right. Yeah. Could, could you expand on that more? Cause there, there's like a, there's like a uh, almost contradicting voices in our heads sometimes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and look, I think it's a balance you have to constantly fight. And, and, you know, it's the it's being able to assess everything going on in your life and not mistaking, like feeling like like I'm not doing anything or what should I be doing with I have more time to do something else, because that's another thing that I want to do. But but again, I I'm I, I think that's this continual like delicate dance, um, you know, especially for someone like me, you know, it's like, it's like when, like, I, you know, I control my entire reality and everybody around it. So it's like when I, when I move slowly, they begin to move slowly. When I, when I move fast, they ramp up. And then if I get us all going in the wrong, uh, uh, if, I drive us into a direction that's let, let us all less focused. Boy, I just, I, 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 as soon as I begin to feel it, I make the change immediately. I used to just like, oh, I already started it and said, this is what I wanted to do. I don't want to make it look like I'm flip-flopping on saying, oh no, now I don't want to do that. I just, you know, and, and that includes, man, I, you know, this year I started to do two new companies that I just, it immediately thinned me out too much and they weren't part of my larger purpose and I could feel it immediately and went through the process of just stopping them and devastating a couple people like instantly, right? And even most recently as I'm trying to build, you know, I'm, I'm writing the machine mindset book and really building the philosophy and then I'm, I'm building machine living, essentially the software program for everybody to kind of be able to easily and intuitively um, take all of this stuff, these systems and this way of combining these, this core existence system into something that everybody could use and grow into over time. Um, but I'm still, you know, shooting on all, all the podcasts and doing all my companies and shooting 252 episodes uh, of television a year. And, um, you know, doing all of this, mind you, I only work, you know, 30, you know, 25 to 30% of my time. So I'm fitting all of that into um, my allowed work time or the time that I'm willing to work. So it gets pushed up against the edges. And what do I want to build more than anything? I want to build that software. 
I want you to be able to use the software and be like, oh, I was able to do it like, and then be able to, the people that you mentor, hey, you can, you here's the basic version of just yeah. these five things and ask yourself this, this is how it'll begin to pump up the data for you and show it to you in an app. Like then, then That's it would cool. be super applicable and then it would be teachable. And then you could, you would have a framework to grow into because right now I just have really technical words and the output is like, I'm happy. Right, you know? right, right. And I got all these systems but it's like what you know what i mean so but i i as much as i i had to i had to push it to the end of the year I'm like okay it's like i want to i need to get the framework of the book done like i'm i'm before i move forward on that just constantly adjusting when you're at capacity and be willing to make the tough calls um in, in order to to get you back into order or that flow state you just have to be willing to do you know like and it's constant assessment and because you got to think the world's constantly changing around you and then you're constantly growing and changing so it's it's never just like oh i'm just going to do this and this is what it is like even my schedule and the rhythm of how it is constantly changing and evolving kids now are in different schools constantly changing and evolving like date nights with my wife have have now moved from like go, going to movies at 7 30 let's go to movies at four o'clock on on thursdays so that we can get back and go to bed early and say like, oh, like constantly optimizing and updating like okay oh build with rob and and shooting tv i want to start an hour earlier on friday because my kids are in soccer now like okay so then i can go straight from shooting and pick them up and take them to soccer and not miss that like on fridays like constantly right, right. evolving a moment and assessing on an ongoing going basis and then again where i use that qualitative data how do i feel about my life work and health is like when those no if those numbers get pulled down make a note of it and be and understand why it happened and then um assess it and and make the change over time you know what i mean like just just don't allow yours because because think about it you get into these habits and rhythms and if you and by order it's just what we do in nature we we find order good or bad to make things to take to make things less effort for us now if you do that with purpose and then continually try to do higher output things with less effort that's when the system is working at a really high level but if you're not careful your your existing system becomes incredibly hard to break because you're um it's been built into your so many different aspects of your life you know i always joke that like the doctor that comes to my house four days a week who also trains um you know, a bunch of pro athletes and, and Olympians and how he doesn't have time to work out, you know what I'm saying? And it's like your system guy, it's your system. Like you can't like, because his system, he gets up early, then he has to like do his emails. Then he has to like get the kids up. Then he comes to my house. Like, you know, it's like he, he, unless he restructures his life, He's never going to find the time that he tries to squeeze it in, in between clients at his work or after work impossible right like in right. the sense of like 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 maybe you know what i'm saying like but it's not part of the system then you make the assessment how tired am i oh i gotta pick up my kids like oh i'm gonna go i i'm not gonna do it but it's this constant balance and constant reassessment again getting better and better and more optimized with time you know and so with that optimization and all these things you're talking about, this energy, are you finding yourself in the flow? Or are you finding yourself overwhelmed sometimes? Because, you know, like you said, like, like the trainer, is he overwhelmed? Is he in the flow? You know, yeah. and he's in the flow. But he's not as healthy as he should be because he didn't build working out into the flow. Now, for him to try to work out, it's disruptive to his flow, because his flow was built in another way. And so for me, you know, I like to say you're only, only overwhelmed. Um, you're only doing too much if you're overwhelmed. Right. And so you have to be the judge of if you're doing too much. And, and so to me, if you if you can imagine, you know, 
I, I live in a world where I almost have no negative thoughts, right? It's al- almost impossible for me to have a negative thought. And That's cool. It, right, because you've just cleared out every single thing that could possibly give you a negative thought because you popped up in your qualitative data. And over time, you optimized your system and, and got everything to a place to essentially alleviate that. So when you have a negative thought, it's usually isolated, right? <coughs> a single incident you're dealing with. And so, so now then, then the only thing that gets me from time to time, I get overwhelmed, right? And when I get overwhelmed, it is because I have so many things that are in this sort of like, you know, giant system operating, a couple things break down in the system and, and or a couple um, things are disrupted in the system, additional work, a couple different things. Like it's only when like, um, something happens in, in that world that dis, di, disrupts it, that I'll feel overwhelmed. But boy, as it's happening, I step right out above it. And I'm like, oh, look at this, right? How do we avoid this ever happening again, right? Like, it, you're just like, this is the one, like, too many things where if you weren't dealing with, you um, building a house while simultaneously trying to go through this acquisition if you didn't have and and then then when this tree issue came up and you got to go meet with the city like you're gonna like oh like you would be like you wouldn't be like oh what like I got it but I got to do this and then my life is flowing like and and then you assess it and you know hey this is your dream. You're going to keep pushing through. This is one of those things. Then you, you already have evaluated it from a time and energy perspective. And even though it got you today, you completely reconciled it and you're clear the next day, right? Because it's really about, you're going to get overwhelmed from time to time. Yeah. But I really see a future for myself where it's like, you don't even like, I build so much like, like defense in the system of, of energy and, and time and capacity or mind share, um, protecting it at such a level that you don't, you could never get overwhelmed by any incoming because you have such deep defenses behind your mind share and essentially, extra time that you use more for free thinking and evolution and progressing and reflection. That is the buffer around everything that you have. Then you build everything um, where there's very little stakes involved as it relates to the harmony of your existence. Right now, obviously something traumatic or something big happens, it, it would disrupt it. But like, that's basically what I've been doing like year over year and it's why hardly ever any negative thoughts and get overwhelmed you know i've been probably overwhelmed so far this year like five times you know what i mean like and and they're funny because it's like it's always the same you get overwhelmed and then you 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 begin to think of all these things all these different things you wish you didn't do Right. When you get overwhelmed, that's why that's why the qualitative data was so important to my growth, because at a five, you're neutral, six and above, you're hopeful and a four and below, you're half empty and you're negative. And when you feel half empty, you could pick apart all of these different things that you wish you wouldn't have done. Then you're real reactionary. You try to overreact like like, oh, I should just change this and this. I just need to stop doing that. Like you get overreactionary, which then in turn leads you to making overcorrection, overcorrections in your decisions versus like, like being able to assess it, getting back to even, and then making your decisions from that, from that point of view, rather than being down in the negative and make, make no mistake, You know, from 2015 to 2018, I spent a lot of time in half empty. And it was only in 19 that I really begin to grow um, into to to really having fewer and fewer half empty feelings. Then in 2020, I probably had 
what I'd consider, you know, I don't know the exact numbers, I'm going to get them 30 or 40, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe 30 or 40 bad days that were lower numbers in a year to then like 10 bad days in 2021 and no bad days, maybe, maybe one, I don't, I can't think of any offhand in this year at all in a qualitative number based one, you know what I'm saying? Like that to me is like, like when you see that whole system working together and you could go back and look at like, like, look how many fewer bad days I've had in this, right. year. like, and look how many better days. Look at my averages are so much higher. I am living this like higher quality, happier life by the numbers. That that's like the beauty of that gamification. You know what right. it is? It's no different than being a basketball player and and like working after practice and working in the off season and seeing your um, you know scoring like shooting percentage going to 55% from 35% and seeing your average score per game going from 12 to 24 you know what i mean right, right. it's like it's like that only it's your life mm. you know and so it's like you know so if you can imagine we go back to confidence and self belief and self worth and all these things when you can see that you are this like happier more balanced fulfilled human being in the data in in the numbers it motivates you to stay to stay on track and then protects you from ever falling too far because you just know that like man like i really am living this amazing life by design right because you do got to go out yeah. and design it and create it in order in order to live it you know man man rob you're so inspiring man i wish i had more time with you i just a couple more things man i want to respect your time um you mentioned basketball we were talking about the flow i gotta ask you about kobe i've been asking you know most of my guests about kobe um you've had him on your show ridiculousness can you just mention anything that comes to mind about kobe bryant man let me I'll, I'll, let me just tell you about when we had him on ridiculous yeah yeah it was the very first time um, in all the years of doing that show that I could not hear myself do the intro. It was like, it was the craziest every, that crowd was screaming louder. It felt like we were in Staples center and they were screaming MVP, MVP. It was the craziest, like, um, like experience that we have ever had and I've ever had personally uh, on the show itself. And in, 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 you know, he's, you know, he's the thing that makes him so much different and so much more special is he is the embodiment of his own philosophy. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, and, and to me, why he is the ultimate inspiration to me. And when I think of what I'm doing with the machine mindset and how I, I am the embodiment of what my philosophy can produce as it relates to like what I think is everybody's ideal existence of this happy, harmonious, high quality life, like, the same way that the Mamba mentality and the absolute commitment to winning in all aspects of, of life is what his philosophy was and, and what he embodied on every single level. And there was no compromise, right? It, in every, he stood alone and, and there were people that worked hard and then there was Kobe level. And it's like he stood alone and owning it and it being the embodiment of who he was and ultimately his philosophy and the bar for all sports, you know what I mean? And, and to me, that, that is like the lasting legacy beyond his basketball. You know what I'm saying? Because yes, we, we, we don't even, we, we, we don't think about 
championships or MVPs or, or the historic side of a 60 point, like last game or any of the like crazy stuff of like that weird stretch where he hit like seven out of 10 game buzzer beaters, like in a weird yeah. stretch, you know, yeah. like he did all this remarkable stuff, but we think about him as his philosophy and his dedication with his mindset about being superior and aspirational because it's so difficult to operate on that level. And we all wish that we had and commit just a portion of that in our own work ethic and commitment to excellence in our own behalf, you know, straight up, yeah, man, Rob, um, before we go, I wanted to just ask you and let you talk about your podcast because I'm a huge fan. I, I really appreciate how you share your mind and your insights with these other entrepreneurs that come on uh, to the show. And it's been, it's been like eye opening. It's actually what you talk about on build with Rob is actually almost better than what I've learned in school yeah. about, about success, about business, about learning and growing. Um, talk a little bit about your experience with, with build with Rob and where it's going. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, it was a, it was a really interesting thing because, you know, even how the podcast happened for me, it sort of revealed itself along the way, you know, mm -hmm. because yep. I initially, you know, I knew I didn't want to do interview podcasts, right? And, and I really wasn't ready to share, like, sort of my mindset side of things, right? Initially, I was just going to, like, always have my own founders on and talk through uh, sort of, you know, that business side and and just what's going on in our portfolio companies but one thing that i ended up doing is like on my website if you wanted to partner with us you'd have to make a video instead of a pitch deck which then then when i began to see those videos it was like wow this would be this this would be great to have them on like because it's so so cool that like you know they're pushing and then in that same time i started doing press again and doing interviews again because you got to think i didn't do any press or interviews uh, for many years, I did like Tom Bilio and Lewis and Ed yeah. Milet, like, you know, yeah. years and years ago. Um, but I, I was too, too busy. Like, no, I'm, I'm building something here. I want to wait till I've created. I don't want to talk about what I'm going to do. I want to talk about what I did uh, when I eventually do it. So last year, when I really started doing like press, then it like, and all these podcasts, it just it just naturally started to lead towards my philosophy and my systems and how it all works, which then really, you know, like drove me even further since I was already working on the book and the philosophy itself, then then it I just really enjoyed talking about that. And then it led to this idea of like, let's start integrating that into the to the show. And then my big sort of thing for entrepreneurs is integrate, you know, when you design your company, um, design your life at the same time, so you can integrate them and grow them together, which then led to like, hey, let's make this show with entrepreneurs be about their business vision and their life vision. Uh, so I can begin to push that on people of like this idea of like, you're going to be an entrepreneur, you need to, you want to grow uh, your life vision and business vision simultaneously. And, and that's how the show began to evolve um, over time that kind of led to, to the structure. And, and, and for me, um, you know, I think, I think even in another evolution, where I'm, I'm going to, you know, push the the entrepreneur side and the guest side of things as build with Rob and then just do when I do like the half hour shows where I just share like my mindset stuff, yeah. like then have that be machine mindset to kind of split the mindset um, and the entrepreneur stuff uh, together since I evolved it. But, you know, it's, it's a, I just enjoy like, I just have the ability to, to see clearly um, business concepts and ideas, no matter what the type of them, in the sense to be able to help entrepreneurs uh, see, take different things to take into consideration to help yeah. with their idea or evolve it. I just really enjoy doing it. 
Um, and, and that's sort of how it, it, it evolved into it. But again, I had to get that into systematized and automated quickly um, to where it wouldn't disrupt my time. Because you got to think, shooting that podcast will end up taking just as much of my time shooting 52 episodes of that podcast as it will of me shooting 252 episodes right. of ridiculousness. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, and so to me, it's like at some point getting it highly optimized, like to where it now takes the least amount of energy, effort and time uh, is, is what I got to get, get it to, you know? Well, it's really cool, man. I just, I have to say like, it's inspiring. It, I appreciate the, the mindset that you share in there. I appreciate how you talk to other entrepreneurs i i had hi on hi, right here hey, hi awesome. yeah. yeah they're they uh they're a sponsor of of uh this episode so thank you hi uh, but i just appreciate how you are able to see a vision for someone else like to me that's an inspired leadership quality um and i i i don't have quite the uh the ability you have to do that but i'm working on that because i think that that shows a lot of entrepreneurial maturity when you can actually build a vision for not just yourself, but maybe when someone else comes to you with a vision and you can say, Hey, you know what? I got some ideas too. That's really cool, man. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And I think my role, you know, in, in the venture studio is, you know, you know, a lot of things we co-find and, and do together. So we shape the vision yeah. um, and it's, it's, it's helping people, you know, it's, you know, I like to refer to myself as a visionary Sherpa, right? <laughs> help you shape yeah. it and then help you stay on track along the way and get you help. Let's like have someone to talk about looking out way into the future and what the decisions that's happening now can affect that. Uh, I, I think is something that I've grown that I really enjoy, have gotten really good at mm -hmm. and, and is essential in sort of the value of of who i am and what i provide as a partner for the people that i build companies with you know totally man and i want to help uh, along the way if i can with the youth side of it because i feel like there's so many youth entrepreneurs like you said athletes looking to be entrepreneurs but like who need help with that vision right be, be, you know like creating your own vision is a skill wouldn't you say that not only is it a skill but it's it's something that you have to just keep doing over and over and yeah over, yeah yeah right because you only believe it and build that belief. If you say, this is what I'm going to do. Here's right. the steps I need to do to get to it. And this is what's going to happen. And then you would do, do one of those. You know what right. I mean? And, right. or you're making that progress. Right. And, and to me, it's like, even, you know, we've on our, on our foundation, right. We, we modified our do or die foundation to the do or die visionary foundation. Right. Ultimately, because we, we want um, that, that vision for life and business to be sort of essential, mm -hmm. you know, and then we partnered with the, uh, the different, um, you know, groups to FI and build and nifty that are supporting, uh, in, uh, previously incarcerated and, and youth organizations, but teaching them the entrepreneurial mindset, the skills to build a company. And then for our program inside with them, our see it, believe it, do it challenge. We have them make a video, what is your your business vision, your life vision? What is your plan to achieve it? And what are you going to do to make it happen, right? Then, then they end up um, like, again, what is my life vision? Just getting people to even think about it. Because even people on the show, like when it's like, pitch your life vision, it's hard for people to do, you know what I'm saying? Sure. It's hard to articulate, you know? And, and, and why I want... To you know, continue to try to build the tool one day. That's this all-encompassing tool that helps everybody on all levels begin to develop that skill. So it, and as you get older and evolve further and further, you basically begin to predict the future because you continually see the future and then build the plan to go out and achieve it. You know. Yeah, man. Yeah, Rob. Bro, this was a great uh, conversation. I'd love to invite you back for a round two sometime. We can talk more about success and um, I want to talk more about money stuff too. But this was great. I loved it. I appreciate you. I'm inspired by you. I would love to quote you for my forthcoming book, The Inspired Athlete, which is coming out soon. Um, and uh, dude, you're just, uh, you, 
like uh, Dave Meltzer says, you are a ferocious Buddha, man. You are, you yeah, know, yeah. and and, sh- <laughs> and shout out to Dave Meltzer and Craig Siegel um, for connecting me. And I just I just appreciate you, man. Hey, I've really enjoyed it, man. Stay inspired, Good. man. Stay, Stay inspired. inspired. That's what it is, right? That's what it is. Uh, hold on one second, man. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Peace and blessings and stay inspired, everybody.